Welcome to Three Count Commentaries. Today, we want to do Royal Rumble Retrospective, Royal Rumble 1988, which is technically speaking, the second Royal Rumble match. So during this retrospective, we will be talking about the first Royal Rumble as well, because it was not televised. So we're going to be talking about the first and the second, um, not be able to do any sort of deep dive into the first one, which was in 1987. But I do have an article written by Danny Burkholter that I think will be very interesting for us to sift through. And we'll talk about that, which includes the creation of the Royal Rumble concept. We're going to talk about that and we're going to go through the 1988 Royal Rumble. So this ought to be pretty fun as far as um, history is um, put together. OK, so <clears throat> from CBS Sports. Danny Burkholter in 2017 did an article where he talked about the lost Royal Rumble. So 1987, Pat Patterson and Vince McMahon are trying to put together a, a big show. Uh, Patterson uh, came up with the idea, of course, and Vince said it was, it was never going to work and it was stupid. So but McMahon trusted him and they were going to try out this idea um, in, in front of a real audience, uh, Vince was learned about the idea of doing a big battle royal. Uh, the article mentions the battle royal. Uh, I don't think it mentioned the Los Angeles battle royal, which I think was the biggest battle royal of the time. It was usually in early January. Um, I believe it was at the Olympic Auditorium. I want to say it was. I'm going off the top of my head now, not off the article. But Pat Patterson got the idea from doing. Uh, the big battle royal in January. It came from the California uh, territory. I, I want to believe it was Michael Abel's territory, or what, I think it might have been Roy Shire's San Francisco uh, territory, where they started doing yearly battle royals um, every January. Um, Andre the Giant was a pretty uh, normal um, appearance. That was a big enormous appearance for Andre at the time. So the idea was to have a big yearly battle royal. Well, not even big yearly battle royal, but just a big battle royal. And they wanted to do it differently. So the idea was to treat it almost like a gauntlet where they would come in. Wrestlers would come in a little at a time. Vince hated the idea, as I just said. But because Vince trusted Pat Patterson, he gave him a little bit of space in order to do it. So at a house show, they decided to have the first ever Royal Rumble match. On October the 4th, 1987, in the Keel Auditorium in St. Louis. So the very same city that the 2022 Royal Rumble will be taking place, St. Louis, is the birthplace of the Royal Rumble match. And as you can tell, it started, it actually came in October. <laughs> so, uh, first-hand accounts of the show, you know, very few people even know this Royal Rumble even occurred. Um, because most of the wrestlers don't remember being in it. Or on the show. So that's something that's very interesting for this article. But he said, but he says, quote, what we know for sure is that the first Royal Rumble was a major disappointment. For many reasons, it just didn't resonate with fans. McMahon's doubts about the Royal Rumble concept appeared to have been validated in a low risk environment, allowing McMahon to say to safely balk at the idea of staging a Royal Rumble on TV where the stakes were significantly higher. Uh, Patterson says, we tried it in St. Louis on a smaller scale. I was not there. I wish I would have been there. They got the concept all mixed up and it didn't work. Then Vince says to me, it's not going to work, Patrick. So <laughs> apparently Pat Patterson was not on hand for the first Royal Rumble match. Therefore, the match flopped and it did not really, really work. But uh, the match went on and uh, there was a there was a card that the writer, uh, like I said, Danny Burkholder, he got from the St. Louis Dispatch. The car had read, uh, Hillbilly Jim defeated Nikolai Volkov. The Magnificent Morocco defeated Cowboy Bob Orton. One Man Gang defeated Junkyard Dog. Uh, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff defeated Ravishing Rick Rude. Billy Jack Haynes and Davy Boy Smith defeated Demolition, Action Smash. Billy Jack Haynes defeated King Kong Bundy. Uh, Sensational Sherry defeated Velvet McIntyre. And the one man gang won a Royal Rumble match, last eliminating the junkyard dog. So it reads, quote, there were 12 men in the Royal Rumble. It is likely that all 12 came from the group of the 13 male wrestlers on the undercard. But it's unknown which of the 13 men set out. It clearly wasn't gang, the winner, 
or Junkyard Dog. It's worth noting that Haynes worked twice on the undercard alone, in both cases as a substitute sitting in for the Dynamite Kid and for Ricky Steamboat versus uh, King Kong Bundy. Whether he was the guy left out of the Royal Rumble match is unknown, but if not, then he worked three matches on an eight-match show. Not bad for a guy that wouldn't even advertise to be there. So we learn later that the wrestlers themselves, most of whom don't even remember the first Royal Rumble match. He says, quote, wrestlers work hundreds, maybe thousands of house shows in their careers. Asking a wrestler to recall a 29-year-old house show match nobody ever asked them about without video to help jog their memories is an impossible request. Although the Royal Rumble is special today, the first one was just another match. They promptly forgot about it afterward. Uh, this, of course, 29 years would be, would be from 2017, which was five years ago. So it was uh, 33, 34 years now. Um, so it was a long time ago. One Man Gang has a claim to being the first ever Royal Rumble winner, but he never talks about it because he doesn't recall it. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> the One Man Gang said, quote, I wish I could give you details about it, but I really don't remember it. <laughs> Paul Orndorff, who was also likely in the match, doesn't remember it either. Orndorff told CBS Sports he doesn't remember the show, not his undercard match with Rude, nor the Royal Rumble match on the same show, nor the whether he was sure to be a competitor in the match or not. Paul Orndorff said, we're talking about hundreds of matches since 1987. Orndorff explained. Orndorff was happy to hear Rude's name, though. Rick Rude, he asked with a touch of reverence. Rude was a great man. We were good friends. I loved that guy. Of course, now Mr. Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff has also passed away. So this is a very poignant um, thing to, to realize. So this is very good. Bill Eady, who wrestled as Demolition Axe, added to the list of performers that can't recall any specifics. Axe said, you're the first person that ever brought that up. I wish I could help you, but it would be all speculation. So... <laughs> So the article on the Royal Rumble ran September the 11th, 2000, 1987, promoting the October 4th show, and it laid out the rules. Two wrestlers start the match, and a new wrestler enters at random every two minutes. You win by being the last wrestler in the ring after all of your opponents have been tossed over the top rope with both feet touching the floor. The story also clarified that the wrestlers, the prize that the wrestlers will be fighting over. Quote, the one who remains will most likely battle Hulk Hogan on November the 17th, it said. Referring to the date of the next St. Louis house show after the Royal Rumble. Hogan was a WWF world champion at the time in 1987. So there you have it. In its earliest incarnation, the Royal Rumble's prize was a future world title match. Just as it is today. And that is the end of the article. So that's about the first Royal Rumble. Which was very interesting. Um, because I knew there was one prior to 1988. Just like there were King of the Ring tournaments prior to 19... whatever, Whichever one Harley Race won. Or Bret Hart and all them. There was King of the Rings before that. So, there it is. So, 1988 was the first televised Royal Rumble match. And it emanated from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. <laughs> this is crazy. Vince McMahon and Jesse Ventura were on commentary. It was a uh, TV show, I believe. So, it had an undercard, but we're not going to go through the undercard. We are going to go through... Some of the usual, uh, which was the Iron Man, the Final Four, and the winner. Uh, they hadn't really perfected the, the Royal Rumble concept yet, so it didn't really have too many interwoven stories. It was just kind of a battle royal with a lot of different guys coming in. It was more of a spectacle than anything. And uh, they kept, they really pressed the nature of, you know, who could be next and what could happen. So the number one entrant in the first ever televised Royal Rumble was Brett the Hitman Hart, and he was the Iron Man. He was in the match until number 19 came out. Of course, you will be able to do the simple math that, okay, if he was number one, and he was in until 19, and there's every two minutes, don't even bother. Because people that came out before two minutes were up, sometimes it was a minute 30 seconds, sometimes it was a minute 45, they did not they, they uh, kayfabe the times. Everybody knows that. It, it was not exactly um, the right time. Tito Santana, who was uh, in the tag team strike force at the time, was actually number two. Butchery, the natural with his blonde hair 
was the first man to come out of the chute. He was number three. Uh, he was eliminated by Jake Snake Roberts. He was the first man ever eliminated from the Royal Rumble on television. Uh, I love Butch Reed. I think a lot of people should know that by now. This was not the Butch Reed of Mid-South Wrestling just a couple of years prior. He looks like he had gained some weight. He had lost some muscle definition. Um, he was doing, a, I guess, a Sweet Daddy Seeky type of thing with the blonde hair. Um, it was... It wasn't quite Butch Reed, you know, it wasn't quite what Butch Reed should have been, but eh, it, it was still good. I still remembered it as a kid, you know, when he uh, made some uh, some returns later. Jim the Anvil Nightheart came in number four. Uh, this led to a substantial heat segment with Jim the Anvil and uh, Brett the Hitman Hart, who were both heels, beating the tar out of Tito Santana. And uh, <laughs> this was great. For a short time there, all three heels were beating the tar out of Tito Santana, which created great sympathy. This is back in the days where all the heels worked together. So they weren't fighting each other. They just worked together to beat the shit out of uh, Tito Santana, which was fun. Jake Snake Roberts, who was a babyface at the time, came in to make the save on Tito. He was number five. King Harley Race was number six. He also had bleach blonde hair. Vince had a thing about bleach blondes at the time. Number seven, Jumpin' Jim Bronzel of the Killer Bees, which is, which Stephanie McMahon says is her favorite tag team. And if you believe that, I got a bridge to sell you. I doubt Stephanie McMahon can even know the members of the Killer Bees. Number 18 was Sam Houston, who was uh, Jake Roberts in real life, little brother. Uh, number nine was the evil referee, Dangerous Danny Davis, not to be mixed up with Danny, uh, uh, Danny Davis, the uh, owner of OVW. Uh, Boris Zukov was number 10. Don Morocco and Nikolai Volkov both came out for number 11. Uh, Volkov, for some odd reason, thought he was number 11. Him and uh, Don Morocco got into an argument in the Iowa. Uh, Don Morocco punched him out and then got in the ring. The referees held Volkov back. But Volkov was number 12. Uh, number 13 was Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Number 14 was Outlaw Ron Bass. Number 15, B. Brian Blair, the second member of the Killer Bees. Uh, Jim Bronzel was already eliminated by this point in time. Number 16 was Hillbilly Jim. Number 17 was Dino Bravo, who, who uh, set the KFA powerlifting record earlier in the night. Um, Dino Bravo, man. Oh, boy. Number 18 was the Ultimate Warrior, which is, didn't have the great reaction that you would think. But it was 1987, so he, was, he wasn't the Ultimate Warrior yet. Um, so it was, it was close, though. Uh, number 19 was the one-man gang. He came in and started throwing a lot of people out. Um, number 20, which was the last man in the match, was the Junkyard Dog. So uh, the first Royal Rumble had 12. The second had 20. They hadn't really, again, perfected the concept yet. Um, they did a, a nice little story at the end. The, well, the final four were Hacksaw Jim Duggan, one-man gang, Dino Bravo, and Don Morocco. They did a nice little story where they had one man gang and Dino Bravo uh, jump um, Don Morocco and he was trying to avoid them, but they ended up beating him up and they held him, you know, how, how bad guys used to hold people up. That's what, you know, I miss those days where bad guys used to hold the guys up so you can take the cheap shot. Uh, one man, Dino Bravo held him up. So one man gang could go and get a run and start and he clotheslined Dino Bravo over the top. Not Dino Bravo, but uh, uh, Don Morocco over the top rope. So that was a nice little spot where the heels worked together. Again, heels working together. Great stuff. So after they worked, you know, successfully worked together to get, to get rid of Don Morocco, who was a huge fan favorite at the time. They went to work on Hacksaw Jim Duggan. They started beating his ass. And then they tried to do it again. They held up. Dino, uh, Dino Bravo held up Hacksaw Jim Duggan and one man gang hit the ropes. He comes running back. Boom. Close lines. Dino Bravo over the top rope. So it, it blew up in his face. You know, so it worked the first time. Didn't work the second time. So that, that leaves Hacksaw Jim Duggan and one man gang one on one. Um, they fight a little bit, but Hacksaw Jim Duggan is still selling the beat down. Uh, one man gang hits the ropes again. He's going to clothesline Jim Duggan over the top rope. Duggan ducks and pulls the top rope down. One man gang goes over. So Hacksaw Jim Duggan is the first winner of the Royal Rumble match. 
not the first ever, of course. WWE constantly says he he won the first Royal Rumble match, but they only counted if it was on television. So that's <laughs> that's the kind of thing that they do. So it lacked the cohesiveness and the story of later Royal Rumble matches, but they have they were still toying with the concept. It was not completely fully formed yet. Also, Hacksaw Jim Duggan did not get anything for winning. You know, Hogan was the champion at the time, and they were actually building up, I believe, to Hogan and Andre. And so Duggan didn't get a, a big reward for winning the Royal Rumble. It was just kind of bragging rights. But it was still a fun match to watch if you haven't seen some of these guys in a long time. Or if you just want to see, like, young Bret Hart really go in there and put in work. I think if you look at the roster... I could probably go through and note how many of these guys are dead. Uh, let's see. Um, Bret Hart alive. Tito Santana still alive. Butch Reed dead. Jim Neinhart dead. Jake Roberts still alive. Harley Race is dead. Jim Brunzel, I believe, is still alive. Sam Houston is still alive. Danny Davis, I'm not sure. Boris Zukov, I'm not sure. Don Morocco, I'm also not sure. Nikolai Volkov, again, not sure. Hacksaw Jim Duggan is still alive. Ron Bass, I'm not sure. Uh, B. Brian Blair, not sure. Hillbilly Jump, I'm not sure he's still alive. <laughs> Dino Bravo is dead. Ultimate Warrior is dead. One Man Gang, I believe, is still alive. And Junkyard Dog is dead. So this was in 1987. So uh, about a quarter of this match um, is guys who are dead today. And it's only going to go up, of course, because this was over 30 years ago. So um, I don't want to end on a sad note. So the, the Royal Rumble is a very fun event, and I like doing Royal Rumble retrospectives. I thought about doing this one, mainly because I like doing history, too. And I stumbled across this article and thought it was very fun. I did Histories of the Battle Royal, in my, uh, and I have a video on the history of the Battle Royal concept. And in one of the videos, I believe it might have been the Andre the Giant video and maybe some of the other history videos I've done. I talked about the Olympic Auditorium Battle Royals. I went to the Roy Shire Cow Palace. That's what it was. The Cow Palace Battle Royals. That would be San Francisco. Okay, so yeah, San Francisco Battle Royal. It wasn't the Bell. It was Roy Shire. So um, these uh, the Battle Royal concept is pretty old and... Um, you know, they, what they did is basically a formation of that where they took elements of the gauntlet concept and just created this. But, you know, it's always fun to revisit the Battle Royals. And um, I'm going to do some more Royal Rumble retrospectives, try to knock out one more before the actual event itself. Thank you guys for listening. Like, share and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys later, man. Peace.